When me and Brad first met, I didn't think we'd get along, but turns out we kind of agree on everything. Your, Your racial, racial identity, identity is the most important thing. thing. Everything, everything should be looked at through the lens of race. race. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Damn. We both and here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jazzbro Gonzo here. Another What's Next. Happy, belated, Merry Christmas to you all. Now, of course, I took off yesterday, uh, spent time with my family, and also, and I hope you did as well, and I hope you had an enjoyable Christmas day celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. But, with that being said, we're going to get right back into the thick of things. Yes, we're going to take a lovely trip back to the land of woke. Now, there are going to be a number of stories as we close out the year from the best of, the worst of, um, from food to entertainment to pop culture to politics. It's all going to be coming in like a landslide. Now, there are going to be a number of those stories who claim to be inspirational, and some truly are. Others are wokespirational, and this is one of them. This is comes out of Deadspin. The 2021's most inspiring sports figures or woke-spiring sports figures to be exact. Just a few years ago, there was a push for athletes to be nothing more than mute entertainers. Luckily enough, they refused to shut up and dribble or stick to whatever sport they played. And ever since A in San Francisco lost his skills, then lost his job, had to become relevant again by doing something so stupid, so moronic, so idiotic that it started a movement. He then kneeled during the national anthem and a group of WNBA players in Minnesota decided that enough was enough. With the help of social media, the world has been able to watch as athletes from every sex made up gender and race have been able to tell their stories and use their platforms for change. And as 2021 winds down, Deadspin would like to take this opportunity to shout out 10 of those athletes that made this world a little better for their communities and humanities as a whole. Now, before I go on, there are going to be some noticeable omissions in this top 10. Well, you may know them right off the top, but uh, I think we're going to have fun with this list. And here we go. Simone Biles, you know you're important when your decision brings an entire Olympic Games to halt, yes, the 2021 Woke Olympics. So when the face of gymnastics chose her safety and mental health over joy, we all get her watching her do flips in the air, it caused quite a stir. Some called her a quitter, fact. Others said she was selfish and soft, fact. And then there were people that didn't agree with the, quote, timing of it all. But in the end, as usual, those people didn't matter well. So you say, Carl Nassib, despite what the NFL may think, football players have always been gay. Have listened to that opening line. Despite what the NFL may think, football has always been gay. <laughs> Nassib's courage and openness are proof that progress has been made, especially when you think about the way Michael Sam was blackballed Absolutely not. He did not have the skills to play in the league. And that is fact. By the league just a few years ago for being gay. But unfortunately, the SIP situation is one that also sheds light on what members of minority groups are going through. Because of all the, quote, support that Nasib has received after he came out, he's still playing on a team that hired and fired homophobic coach John Gruden. Yes, because you had to dig into emails 10 years old for him making outlandish cracks. Naomi Osaka. Being a minority is hard, of course, a quote, woman of color. Being a triple minority is even harder. So when you're black, Asian, and a woman that plays a sport that has always been considered white, people tend to be upset and don't do what you, uh, they want you to do, like choosing not to partake in a press conference where a lot of bad questions were asked. If Maria Sharapova did what Osaka did, she would have been labeled as a, quote, mental health icon. However, when a very shy biracial 
woman did it because she'd rather pay a fine to preserve her peace instead of sitting at a podium. Many in the media landscape lost it. Kyle Beach. It turned out that uh, there were allegations of sexual assault, and he came to grips with it and brought it to the forefront. Very inspirational. And now we come Kaepernick. Yes, one Colin Kaepernick. The man is inescapable. Five years after taking a knee to protest racism and police brutality, you know, systematic racism, the IOC was still shaken by the movement that Kaepernick started the way they decided to keep their ban on athletes' protest at the Tokyo Summer Games. Even without participating, it was obvious that it was created to be a Kaepernick rule. And while the haters might have celebrated the minor, minor victory, no, it was not a minor victory at all. Kaepernick was back in the news a few months later when Netflix decided to pay him a boatload of money for talking bullshit. Colin in Black and White debuted. To this day, it's one of the most streamed original series of the year, not even Close. Sedona Prince. You may not know her, and neither did I until reading this. She literally changed the game. The latest example of this comes from Kaplan Hecker and Fink report entitled NCAA Internal Gender Equity Review. Yes, because they have to have one. But really, it details the lack of thereof. The report finds the NCAA itself is responsible for holding back the gross of women's basketball uh, through uh, apathy while chasing glory and cash of the men's game. Yes, because let's not have someone who pretends to be a woman in NCAA say, I don't know, a water sport and just crush all the women and take all their records. <laughs> we can't have that, can we? No, that would never happen. Candace Parker. Who had a better year than Candace Parker? Nobody. After solidifying herself as one of the best analysts of all in sports, well, very questionable, while also exposing how bad Shaq is, uh, Shaq never claimed to be a great analyst, you know. Parker became the first woman ever to be on the cover of edition of the NBA 2K. Why? Because she was a woman and it was diverse. She then followed up by leading the hometown six-seeded Chicago Sky to their first WNBA championship in her debut within, with the franchise. That's right. Did you see the championship parade? The millions and millions and, well, no one showed up. And if that was enough, she said to celebrate her second wedding anniversary and will soon be a mother again. Yes, you know, because it's diverse, because it's so stunning, so brave. Okay. It's going on a little longer than I thought it would, but um, I will cut this down. But anywho, my thoughts. Um, omissions. One, Lebroni James. Yes, King Lebroni himself. Bubba Wallace. Yes, Bubba Douche. Uh, Megan Rapinoe. Yes. Um, and I can go on and on. And uh, fortunately, they are the most uh, prominent of woke athletes to shoot their mouths off. But at the end of the day, it's clownish. It's absolutely clownish. There is no inspiration whatsoever among these athletes. Yes, they are athletes in their own right. Yes, they are skilled in their own rights. But when you are being inspirational because you're Asian, because you're a woman, because you're woke, that's not inspirational. It's clownish. It's buffoonish. You know, there's nothing inspirational. Inspirational is... When you have one athlete in the NHL who comes to grips with being sexually uh, sexually abused, that's inspirational. You running around being woke is not inspirational. It's just plain stupid. And with that, well, and laughable too, so yeah. And with that being said, I'm Jasper Gonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more just like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.